Hello everyone, uh, this is one of the first problems of RMO 2002. Uh, in this particular discussion, we want to look at, a solu uh, at the solution of this problem of course, but uh, that is not really our main goal. Our main goal is really to understand the big picture, uh, s to understand some of the strategies and uh, techniques that we can take away from this problem and maybe apply in some other problems. So let's look into the statement of this problem. Uh, it says that we have an acute angle triangle ABC. So let's draw one acute angle triangle. It's given to be ABC and we have point DEF located on BC. So D is on BC, C, uh, E is on CA suppose it's here and F is on AB so F is suppose here. So we have this BC and uh, these three points on BC, C A and AB and this particular relationship is given. So CD over CE equals to CA over CB and so on. We will go back to this uh, ratio, the relationship of the ratios that's given here. But let's see what we have to prove. We want to show that AD, BE and CF are altitudes of ABC. Now if you are familiar with Euclidean geometry, you know that altitudes of a triangle are concurrent, that is they pass through the same point. Uh, so one of the things that we will expect this, these three lines, uh, that is AD, BE and uh, CF, one of the things that we will expect them to do, we will expect them to conquer, to pass through the same point, a common point. So you may imagine that this particular relationship that's given up here that might come to some aid while we try to show that these three lines are concurrent. Our primary goal is however to show that uh, ABC, ADB and CF are altitudes of ABC. So we want to show that these, these three angles are 90 degrees. So let's see what we can do. Let's look at the big picture first. Uh, that is principal strategies that we will use in this particular problem and maybe we can use these strategies later as well in some other problems. So first is show that AD, BE, CF are concurrent using Shiva's theorem. So if you are not familiar with Shiva's theorem, I will mention its statement in a moment. But actually we will not use Shiva's theorem, we will use the converse of Shiva's theorem. It is actually true both ways. And the second strategy that we will use uh, is also very simple, it is uh, most of you are familiar with it. We will use some angle chasing. Angle chasing is almost always useful in these kind of elementary problems and we will put to good reuse uh, that particular strategy. Uh, now first let's start with Shiva's statement of the Shiva's theorem. So Shiva's theorem says something about the concurrent Shavians of a triangle. Now let me quickly tell you what that is. Suppose if we suppose we have a triangle ABC and we draw Shavians. What are Shavians? Shavians are basically lines joining a vertex of the triangle to any point on the opposite side. So Shavian line joining vertex to a point on the opposite side. 
so if we have three such lines from the three vertices of the triangle, if we have three such lines from three vertis vertices of the triangle, so my line's a little off here, but anyway, so then Shiva's theorem says that BD over DC, BD over DC times CE over EA, CE over EA times AF over FB, AF over FB is equal to 1. Now, this is how I remember the Shiva's theorem. When I try to remember it, I always remember that we actually are tra traversing in one direction. We are going from B to D and from D to C, C to A, E to uh, C to E, E to A, A to F and F to B. So, B D over D C times C E over E A times A F over F B equals to 1. But the good news is the converse of this also is true. So, if this ratio, if this ratio works, then AD, BE and CF are concurrent. Uh, I will refer to the geometry module of uh, uh, Chinta classes on triangles and straight lines um, for a more detailed discussion on this particular theorem. Um, the good, the primary use of Shiva's theorem is also uh, executed through trigonometric ratios, which is also quite interesting if you are doing a little bit more complicated problems. Uh, so, coming back to this problem that is given to us and if we look at this particular set of ratios that is provided here, we will immediately see that we can show B D over D C times C E over E A times A F over F B is 1. How can we show it? So, let us find out each of these ratios from this relationship that is provided to us. So, first B D over uh, B D over D C. So, B D is here and D C is here. Okay. So, we want to find out B D over D C times C E over E A. So, C E over E A. So, C E is here and E A or A E is here. C E over E A times A F over F B. So, A F is here, F B is here. So, I am marking them with different colors so that you see the a relationship from the pictures. So, now what is this equal to? You will see that this is immediately equal to the reciprocals given to us. So, C B over C A times A C over A B times A B over B C. Right? So, basically we have all the left hand sides of these three equations here, elements from the left hand side, they are multiplied or the reciprocals of them are multiplied. So, we can multiply the right hand sides. So, let us multiply the right hand side and if we multiply the right hand side, they immediately cancel off giving us 1. So, the relationship that is given in the problem, it immediately says that A D, B E and C F are indeed concurrent. So, let us draw the picture one more time. Drawing the picture over and over again is actually a very good idea. It is sort of each time you draw the picture, 
a little bit more clarity uh, comes into play. So, we have A D, we now know for sure that they are concurrent A D B E and C F and suppose they pass through a point P. Now, let us uh, quickly write the um, relationship that is given here. So, it is given that C D over C E equals to C A over C B, C D over C E is equals to C A over C B. Now, what I will do is I will carefully mark the triangles of which these lengths are parts of. So, C D is this and C E is this. So, we, I mark them in green and C A is, let's, let me mark it in red. red. So, C A is this and C B is this. So, I have marked C A and C B in red in the picture and I have marked C D and C E in green. Good news is that we can identify them as sides of two triangles. So, triangle A C D and triangle B C E. So, the triangles A C D, uh, A C D and B C E are these two triangles. Let me shade these two triangles. Now, you can quickly see that angle C is common and ratio of C D over C A, C D and C A are parts uh, sides of triangle A C D is equal to C E over C B which is a part of triangle B C E. So, this you get by cross multiplying these two. So, clearly these two triangles are similar, triangle A C D and B C E are similar. So, what we get in essence is we can say that these two angles are equal. So, if I shade these two angles, let me shade it in a different color, let me use black. So, these two angles are equal because they are opposite to corresponding sides C E and C D. Uh, corresponding to C D we have this side and corresponding to C E we have this side. Let me draw the picture one last time and see what is going on here. Okay? So, we have A B C a triangle, we have three Shavians. B E A D and C F. And we have already found that they are concurrent. So, we have found, we have found that A D B E C F are concurrent. At the back of our mind, we know that is exactly what we want because altitudes are concurrent Shavians of a triangle. If you have already read that theorem in uh, some high school or middle school book, um, so we, we have found that they are concurrent and we used Shiva's theorem for that. And then by angle chasing, we found that A C D and B C E, A C D is similar to B C E and by angle chasing, we can, we showed that these two angles are equal. So, let us call these two angles alpha. Now, friends, uh, it is very important to see a particular diagram in a manner that says more than just raw information. 
So if you see this diagram from a different perspective, you will immediately see that we can visualize this alpha like this. So as if these two are two ends of one circular arc. So if you think of DE as, a, as, as an arc, if you think of a circle passing through DE, it's easier to visualize it. So as if DE has subtended uh, alpha and alpha, two angles, equal angles at A and B. And at the back of our mind, we know that if we have a circle with a core with an arc DE, it does exactly that at two points in the circumference. So probably something like that is happening here. And indeed it will because if we can show that the, these are 90 degrees uh, angle E and angle D, then we can create such a circle. Anyway, so just like DE produced alpha and alpha, if you go back to the second and the third equalities, you can do the same for FD. So FD will subtend these two angles. This is a little work that you should do. You should, using the second one, you can show that this is beta, this is beta second equality given in the statement of the problem. This is beta and this is beta. And similarly, let's use a different color using Fe. You can show that this angle is equal to this one. So, if this is gamma, this is gamma. It's very important to visualize it in this manner because that's the main takeaway from this problem. If you look at two angles in a certain manner, then you see more than those two angles um, lying around in the picture just as, as they are. So anyway, we have now characterized all these six angles at the three vertex of the triangle. And we get a very interesting relationship. We get alpha plus beta plus gamma plus alpha plus beta plus gamma. So I have taken all these six angles one after another. And what is their sum equal to? Well, they add up to the three angles of the triangle. So clearly they are 180 degree. So two times alpha plus beta plus gamma is 180 degree. Or alpha plus beta plus gamma is 90 degrees. Okay, now let's look at triangle ABE. Triangle ABE. We have alpha, beta and gamma. Let me mark them in black. Alpha, beta and gamma. These, they constitute two angles of the triangle ABE. So in triangle ABE, if we shade it, we have found two angles, angle A plus angle BAE, and they add up to alpha plus beta plus gamma, which is 90 degree. So the remaining angle of the triangle, which is angle BEA, that must also be 90 degree. So this angle here must be 90 degree as well. A bit of angle chasing is involved here, of course. Now, let me, um, this proves that uh, BE is perpendicular to AC. And similarly, we can say that CF is perpendicular to AB and AD is perpendicular to BC. Uh, but Though this completes the proof, I want to revisit the takeaways of this problem because they are the more important 
things about this problem after the solution is complete. First, three Shavians whenever you see them, try to find concurrency, use Shiva's theorem. That is a standard strategy. If you have three Shavians in a triangle, that is one of the things that you should do. Second thing is angle chasing. Use similarity or properties of circles or congruency to show to get equal angles in the picture. Now, properly marking them can be of prime importance. So, we marked each of the angles here as alpha, beta, gamma and that proved to be very useful when we uh, ultimately sorted out all the information that we have. So, these are the two major uh, problem solving strategies that we take away from this particular problem. Uh, we will come back with some more RMO problems soon with in some other discussions. Uh, thank you for watching.